Water is a very important resource for us, for our communities, and we want to make sure that we're taking care of our water sources that we have. And so water quality is something that we use to measure the health of the water source that we have. We have a lot of different tools that we can use to measure water quality. What I'm holding here is a transparency tube, and a transparency tube is used by filling it with an amount of water from a source that we would be looking at, such as this ditch that we have running behind us. We'd fill it up with water, and then we'd look down the tube. Um, you can see there's a white and black disc at the bottom of the tube. We would probably use a partner, and we would be releasing water that we had added to this until we're viewing from the top, and we can see the white and black disc. Once we can first make out the difference between the white and black sections, we read that uh, measurement and that tells us how transparent the water is. Transparency is important because it tells us how clear the water is. The more particles that are in the water, it's going to absorb more energy from the sunlight and it warms up that water source. So another thing that we use to determine water quality is water temperature. Mm -hmm. We use a temperature probe, and there's different ways of doing temperature. You can just use a regular thermometer, mm -hmm. but we actually use uh, probes for it. Yep. And with our probes, we'll turn on our reader here, receiver, mm -hmm. and then we'll turn on the actual metal probe yep. and put that in the water to get the water temperature. Now, one thing about water temperature, because heat could be a pollutant. Yes. In, the, in the waterways. If water's running off like a big dark parking lot or mm -hmm. something, it'll be warmer. That'll change the temperature of that water, which is actually a pollutant. It can be uh, detrimental to the different, it, maybe more algae would grow mm -hmm. and uh, well, that would change the temperature of the different plants and organisms. That's living. right. And also with an increase in temperature, you end up decreasing the amount of dissolved oxygen yes. in the water. And we actually, we have sensors also for dissolved oxygen. Now, dissolved oxygen oxygen that is not this sensor um, that's this sensor yeah. and so we would use this sensor and still could connect it to our lab quest mm -hmm. so whoops sorry and so we would just connect it wirelessly to the lab quest we'll dip this in and then wait for it to level out dissolved oxygen is how much oxygen is literally dissolved in the water yeah and what we know is that the warmer that that water temperature gets the more likely it is that that dissolved oxygen is going to leave and go into the atmosphere but the fish and the aquatic life within the water source need that oxygen to breathe it's, so yeah if it was too dark or something mm -hmm. like that, then it would be less, right? It'd be less, yeah, dissolved. So that you might have less stuff to breathe. Mm -hmm. And it's like Indiana, the number one pollutant by volume is sediment. Oh. And so if we have a lot of sediment that's been just in the water, mm -hmm. then it's going to block out the sun. It's going to take in the heat from the sun. Right. It's going to absorb, absorb that, that and the bottom won't get the sun. And so we want to protect those things. So and again, we would see that. Right. We right see here. that with that transparency tube, measuring mm -hmm. that sediment. But Stephen, is there anything that can be done to prevent sediment? Well, that's a really big thing that we work on. We try to make buffer strips and oh. we can see we have a waterway here. And so water drains through here. And so we have water, but right here on both sides of our waterway, we have a buffer zone. Oh. And so this buffer strip will slow down the water, mm -hmm. trap sediment, and hopefully any pollutants that are coming like off this field or off of this wooded area hopefully it's stopping the pollutants including sediment right. from getting into the water itself and helping keep our water cleaner that's why most waterways now uh, you'll see that we have even drainage ditches if we're like in a field yeah and uh, if we're in a field or something like that there'll be we'll have like grass and stuff to kind of slow down and act as a little buffer strip so that we won't have sediment and all the nutrients and stuff right. going into the water because those could be considered pollutants too because it'll change variables within our water quality. I see. Okay, now we've walked down to a water's edge, haven't we? Yep. Because one thing we want to mention and talk about is something called macroinvertebrates. Okay. And so what are macroinvertebrates? Well, macroinvertebrates are going to be small species of insects that live right either near the water's edge or right just under the water's surface. Uh, and they're going to a lot of times indicate for us the how, how clean that water system is. And so we can tell the, the health of the water 
power, that's one of the indicators of yep. water quality, right. would be the types of macroinverter roots we find. Why would that matter? Well, some species of uh, macroinvertebrates are very, what is the word? Tolerant. tolerant. They're tolerant, tolerant to pollution. And then some are very intolerant of pollution. So, so when we're we, looking at these macroinvertebrates, okay. if we recognize some of the intolerant species, that we know that our water source is going to be very clean. Uh, so if you have a bunch who that can't tolerate very polluted water and they die off, but we have a bunch of those, right? That tells us that water. That's one indicator that the water is probably a little cleaner. It's cleaner because then they can they can live there. They can make their homes there. Ah. Uh. Well, that makes sense. And uh, there's lots of programs that do uh, macroinvertebrates right. that uh, schools and, and citizens can get involved. And you can actually go out to the water's edge, define a site, mm -hmm. and look at different ones and let them know, report what ones you found. Right. And so the we then will under, have a better understanding of the quality of that water based on that one thing, right? Mm -hmm. I love that. So what's something that we can do to help preserve our water sources? Well, one thing that we can do is to make sure that when we're out enjoying nature, when we're out enjoying parks and, and we're out playing, that we make sure that we always take our trash and either dispose of it properly in a trash can or, and more importantly, that we could recycle. Yeah. Some places don't have trash cans though, Sarah. What do we do there? Well, at that point, you'd have to sort of plan ahead and make sure that you're taking a trash bag with you ahead of time or even a couple of trash bags to be able to sort your recycling. And then you always carry out everything that you take in with you. I think one of my favorite, uh, my favorite sayings, I think it's come from the state parks, if I remember right, uh -huh. it's uh, leave only footprints and take only memories. Oh, I like that. And so it, I yeah. think that really goes well for all areas and it helps protect our environment. And say if we littered, if we didn't take our trash with us, we left it somewhere and littered, then it's going to end up getting washed down um, into the waterways. Yeah. And we're going to have that much more pollution in our waterways. We want to keep them as clean as possible. And so being responsible mm -hmm. and making sure we're disposing of trash and recycling what can be recycled, we're actually taking care of more than just that one little area. We're taking care of the entire ecosystem that we're within.